Sure wish I knew what was going on inside of this little board. If only I had a communication port of some kind. We're going to get back to theory as soon as we get some hardware to test it on. Now, in the old days, we used to connect peripherals to our de desktop machines through an asynchronous U serial cable or a UART. This is one of those cables, and along with it came adapters of all sorts, things like null modems, 25-pin to 9-pin connectors, gender changers, things like that. We even sometimes made our own. Now, one of the major problems with this type of connection to a peripheral device is that it's point to point. We ended up with bunches of cables. If I needed to connect to four peripherals from my computer, I needed to have four individual ports. Really wasn't any bus technology, just point to point. Also, the data link required configuration on both ends. We needed to make sure we had the speed correct. We needed to make sure that we had the number of start bits, stop bits, bits, parity, all sorts of things. Now, in 1996, there was a standard for a, a bus technology that utilized serial protocol called USB. You all are familiar with that. USB has a number of benefits. It's hot swappable. You can have up to 127 devices connected to a host through a tiered star network. Each one of the devices has self-identification. So anytime I plug in a device, automatically the host knows ex in, in essence, what device it's connected to. There are some problems though. The protocol is quite complex and the host is the one that needs to initiate communication. It's not like the peripheral can just say, hey, here's some information and just pass it back and forth. The UARTs, however, going back to that serial, is really still quite important to embedded systems. It's used because of its simplicity. Once again, we've got point to point, but it's only two wires, three if you count ground, uh, no addressing because it's point to point. If you're transmitting data, you know exactly who you're transmitting it to. The packets are very simple, and if you use frames, those can be used too. Data is typically sent as text, so whenever you're doing some sort of a configuration with a, an embedded device, it's quite simple to just simply pass text back and forth in order to put together configuration items. You might want to just send an XML file and that would provide all your configuration information. There's no synchronization needed, no connection setup that needs to be done. You just simply plug together you've got a connection going. Now, because these serial UARTs are on almost every one of these embedded systems, they're oftentimes used as the interface whenever we're trying to communicate to the hardware on a dev kit. But we aren't going to connect the dev kit through a serial port on the machine. If your machine has a serial port, there's usually only one. More than likely, we're going to want to con connect it to a USB port. That means we need to have some sort of a bridge that connects the physical connection of a USB port to the physical connection of the serial UART and converts the protocol to whatever the protocol is needed for the UART. This schematic here, or this chip pinout, uh, gives you an example of what we're looking at. This is the Silicon Labs CP210, or 2 210X. There's actually two versions that I'm aware of. There's the CP2102 and the CP2109. They have slight different, slightly different functionality. But what you can see in here is that on the one side, we've got this interface that goes to the USB port. It goes into the chip through those connections, and then it takes care of stripping out all of the header and the synchronization information and so forth and passes just the information through the serial UART. So on this other side, you can see the connections that are required in order to connect with our embedded system. There are really only a couple of ones that we're interested in. You'll see that there's a number of signals here like DCD, DTR, and so forth, but the key ones that we're looking at is just TXD and RXD. Those two are going to put together an interface to our embedded system. Now it turns out with our ESP32 evaluation board that we're going to use in some of the videos from here on out, we have one of these bridges. In fact, if you look at this, this top-down shot, you can actually see where we've got this CP, what is that one, a CP2102 interface that can, connects our USB interface to the serial ports on our ESP32.
Now that we've discussed the need for a UART to USB bridge, let's actually install one using the ESP32 dev kit that, that we've been talking about. I'm going to go ahead and plug the dev kit in. And after plugging in the dev kit, you'll see that I'm going to go ahead, it's going to go ahead and set up the device. And once it's successfully set up the device, it's hopefully going to put it as the correct COM port. It's going to show up as a correct COM port in our device list. Let's double check that by opening up Device Manager. And when I open up Device Manager, you should see that one of the categories there is ports, COM and LPT. If I drop that down, you can see that there's the Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge. More importantly though, notice that it says COM3 there. COM3 is the serial port that it's going to act as when we're trying to communicate from our development machine to the product, to the device. It is possible that your device driver doesn't load properly. If that's the case, instead of showing up under the ports, COM and LPT, it's going to show up under other devices. That's not going to work for us. We need to get it into the COM port. We need to get it recognized as a COM port. I've put a link in the description to show you the Silicon Labs download page or to get you to the Silicon Labs download page to download the appropriate device driver. Install that device driver and you should have this evaluation board showing up as a COM port. So take note, I've got COM3 here, yours may be different. I'm going to take note of which COM port I have, and then I'm going to open up PuTTY. And if I open up PuTTY and switch to the serial communication, notice that the serial here, that represents a UART connection to our device. Right now, by default, it's coming up as COM1. I'm going to change that to COM3, which is what we had in our device manager. And then I'm going to change the, uh, the rate to 115, 200 and hit open. Now, our device right now is, this is a brand new device, and right now it is just resetting over and over again. I'll talk about this in a second, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to press reset on this one for good, and I'm going to get a connection, and then I'm going to disconnect this to get it to stop scrolling. So I've scrolled up to the reset that occurred whenever I pressed the reset button on the front of the evaluation board. This power on reset, that reset occurs, or it's noted that that's the type of reset we had, whenever you power up the, the device or whenever you hit the reset button. There's another type of reset here that's just as important. That's this RTC WTT RTC reset. And what that is, well, RTC stands for real-time clock. We're not going to get into why the real-time clock is used right right now but I what I want to pay attention to is the WDT that stands for watchdog timer if our operating system is corrupt or if uh, you know there's no code to execute kind of our only our only attempt at, at at saving the system is to try and do a reset and see if we can kind of sync up and execute real code again problem is there's no code on this that watchdog timer is meant to be a safeguard if we execute if we're starting to execute uh, bad code or corrupt code or the operating system is not able to get control again, the operating system, what it's going to do is every once in a while, write to this counter, put a number in this counter. And that counter, when you put a value in it, it's going to count down. And if that counter ever gets to zero, that means that the operating system has not had a chance to reload a value. And so that means that the operating system is not operating properly. So what happens is the operating system writes a value, you count down, and hopefully before it gets down to zero, the operating system writes a value again and it counts down. If it ever gets to zero, we just reset because we figure that the operating system has lost control of our system. So we've talked a little bit about the importance of UARTs to embedded systems and these little dev kits. We've talked about the bridge that connects those UARTs to the USB port of our development system. We've installed the device drivers on our development system and tested them out by seeing a little bit of text, passing a little text back and forth between our embedded system and the development machine. In our next episode, we're going to look at creating a development environment to create code for our devices.